order honorable senators let me apologize i've taken more than the five minutes the matters that had been raised are, are weighty but i'm ready with my ruling and i proceed to deliver it honorable senators ladies and gentlemen as you will recall before the rise of the senate at 1.15 p.m., the Senate had concluded the hearing of the case of the National Assembly. This included the evidence laid by the National Assembly, including the calling of its witnesses who were examined, cross-examined by counsel for the Deputy President, and re-examined. As the House adjourned, I directed that, as contained in the hearing program in this matter, of the determination of the proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on resumption at 2.30 p.m., the Senate will hear the case of the Deputy President for two hours, comprising examination in chief and re-examination, while the National Assembly will have a period of one hour and 55 minutes for cross-examination. When the Senate resumed at 2.30 p.m., when the opportunity came for the Deputy President's side to commence its case, Senior Counsel Paul Mwite, counsel for the Deputy President, informed the Senate that he did not know the whereabouts of his client and sought to be allowed time, a little time to establish where he was. Thereafter, he informed the Senate that he had learned that his client had been taken ill. Asked how he proposed that the Senate proceeds, counsel for the Deputy President requested for time, possibly up to 5 p.m., to try to meet his client before advising on the way forward. Counsel for the National Assembly, when asked to comment on the circumstances, argued that unfortunate as the situation was, this being a constitutionally time-bound process, it was imperative that pursuant to Rule 11 of Part 1 of the Second Schedule to the Senate Standing Orders, the proceedings proceed. Now I'll, rule, I'll read Rule 11. It provides thus. Where the National Assembly or, or the Deputy President chooses not to appear before the Senate, that fact shall be put on record and the Senate shall proceed with its investigations without further reference to the National Assembly or the Deputy President. But the Senate may, for exceptional reasons to be recorded, perm permit a later appearance before the Senate by the National Assembly or the Deputy President. Now, honorable senators, it is also noteworthy that Rule 12 provides as follows. Subject to these rules, the hearing of the evidence, once it commences, shall proceed and continue until the Senate conclude the hearing of the matter. Following the representation made by counsel for the parties, I suspended the proceedings of the Senate up to 5 p.m. to allow counsel for the Deputy President to report the status of his client. When the sitting of the Senate resumed at 5 p.m., Senior Counsel Paul Mwite informed the Senate that indeed he had contacted doctors at Karen Hospital who were attending to the Deputy President. He further stated that owing to the condition of the Deputy President, he had not been able to access the Deputy President or talk to him. Senior Counsel then proceeded to cite Article 145.6, observing that although the Senate had opted to proceed by way of hearing the Martin Plenary, and while Article 145.6 provides for the hearing of the matter by World Special Committee, the provision obligates the Senate to accord the Deputy President an opportunity to be heard before a vote is taken on the impeachment charges. He further cited Rule 11 of Part 1 of the, schedule to the, of the second schedule to the Senate standing orders, stating that in accordance with the provisions, the Deputy President had chosen to appear and be presented in these proceedings. Counsel for the Deputy President further submitted that the right of the Deputy President to be given an opportunity to be heard under Article 145.6b of the Constitution is not limited by the 10-day timeline otherwise provided for in this matter. In the end, relying on these provisions, Counsel for the Deputy President requested that the Senate adjourns the matter to Tuesday the 22nd of October 2024 to enable his client time to attend to, to be attended to by his doctors. In response, counsel for the National Assembly, Mr. Gumbo, registered his sympathies to the Deputy President 
On the other hand, he noted that the health matters are matters that are beyond human control. However, he noted that the matter at hand was one that was governed by constitutional timelines. Council further indicated that Article 145.6 of the Constitution applied to impeachment proceedings and committee and was not therefore relevant to the, uh, to the present proceedings which had been convened by dint of Article 145.3 of the Constitution. Council observed that the dates for the hearing had by Gazette notice been set at 16th and 17th of October 2024. Council therefore went ahead to observe that His Excellency the Deputy President had robustly participated in the proceedings by filing detailed responses to the allegations as set out by the National Assembly and through various submissions made in the course of the hearing, including cross-examination of witnesses. Council then indicated that if any prejudice was to be suffered by the failure of the Deputy President to testify and be cross-examined, this will be on the part of the National Assembly which had the legitimate expectation of testing the evidence of the Deputy President through cross-examination. Council then referred to the practice in the courts, including the Supreme Court, where parties are allowed to file respective submissions, and the advocates are then allowed to appear and highlight their submissions. Council argued that noting the Deputy President had filed detailed responses and had the opportunity to, to cross-examine the witnesses of the National Assembly the health status of the Deputy President and the constitutional timelines and borrowing the practices of the courts, the National Assembly was willing to forego the cross-examination of the Deputy President and requested that both parties be allowed to highlight their submissions during their closing statements. Senior Counsel James Rengo had similar sentiments and cited Article 145.5 of the Constitution, arguing that the right to appear and be, be represented include the right to be represented by counsel. He argued that the Senate, he argued the Senate that the great, he argued the Senate that the greater duty was to comply with the Constitution and that the Senate could not accordingly go outside the timelines as set out in the Constitution. It is noted that the present hearing was, came, was convened via Gazette Notice 163, Volume CXXV1, dated the 9th of October 2024. Via that Gazette notice, I appointed Wednesday 16th October 2024 as the date for the commencement of the hearing and further that the hearing will run up to the conclusion of the hearing on Thursday the 17th of October 2024. As presently convened, therefore, today at midnight, unless midnight finds the Senate in the course of division, marks the end of the period for the hearing of the present impeachment matter. As this process is time bound by the Constitution to be concluded in not more than 10 days pursuant to Article 145 as read together with Article 150 of the Constitution and noting that the period provided for ends on Saturday the 19th of October 2024, the only window open to the Senate if it so obliged the request for adjournment sought by counsel for the Deputy President will be to gazette Saturday the 19th of October 2024 as a father and final day for hearing of this matter. Now, honorable senators, ladies and gentlemen, such a request is not made to the speaker, but to the Senate, and is accordingly a matter for the Senate to determine. To facilitate this decision, I direct the clerk of the Senate to circulate a supplementary order paper incorporating a notice of motion and a motion for adjournment sort. This being a procedural matter, the motion, if carried, will result in the Speaker gazetting Saturday the 19th of October 2024 as a sitting day to conclude the hearing and determination of this matter. This being the last day allowed by the Constitution of Kenya for these proceedings to conclude. Needless to say, if the motion is not carried, the decision of the Senate will be that this hearing continues to conclusion in the, matter, in the, matter, in the manner provided for under Rule 12. In such event, the hearing will continue as set out in the program with the parties moving to make their closing statements. Now, honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let me take this opportunity on my own behalf and on behalf of the Senate to convey our sincere sympathies and best wishes for a quick recovery to His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa EGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya.
Next order, clerk. Now, honorable senators, you have been circulated with the supplementary order paper. That is the order paper that we are going to use from now going forward. Clerk, Now, honorable senators, this being a procedural motion, you need, need, you don't need to give notice. So when the order is read out, the majority leader will be called upon to move.